All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from just outside Minneapolis by Jordan Mederick. How are you doing, Jordan? Very or good. Thanks Jordo. for having me on, John. Yeah. Jordo, as he's known, it kind of takes me back to growing up in Dublin where they used to try and put an O on the end of everybody's name. <laughs> John O. <laughs> John O. Yeah, exactly. That was one of the worst ones. That didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, so um, Jordo is the founder of one of the fastest growing marketing platforms online, Drop Funnels. And uh, you've appeared on, you're also award winning filmmaker with content on Netflix, Amazon Prime, NBC, CBS, ABC, and many more. And when you're not changing the landscape of online marketing, enjoy time spent with your wife, sons, and fishing the beautiful lakes in Wisconsin. Well, so what's the, what's the biggest thing you've caught lately? Well, I, unfortunately, it's negative 13 degrees out here today, so I've not, uh, I've not gone out and I don't dare ice fish uh, until things warm up, but there's some really great musky fishing out here, that's for sure, so you can get some Excellent. lance of monsters. Right, you can go polar bear hunting then instead. Yeah, um, yeah. Exactly. And so what we're going to talk about today is how to leverage conversational conversations to virtually eliminate any sales objection and close all your sales. So... Um, let's get straight into it, uh, Jordo. So, um, when people, you know, especially salespeople, when they hear something like conversational conversations, they say, well, yeah, well, that, that's what I do. I, I have conversational conversations all the time. Well, what do you, what do you define as a, as a really good conversational conversation? So, yeah, I, what I mean by that is it's a conversion, uh, conversation or you yes. could say conversational conversions, right? So the, right. the whole point is really to guide people through a specific process to help them to to buy what they already want. You know, we know one of the foundational elements of of marketing really for any offer service business in general, you're going to have a lot of resistance if you're trying to 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 sell something to someone, right? But if it's a self-diagnosis and they feel like it's something that's a really good fit to solve their specific problems, it's what they want to want to buy anyway. So we know that 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 burning desire is one of the most key elements to seeing conversions at mm -hmm. you know anywhere from 50 to 80 sometimes 100 percent on your calls um so i i think that really we're in a we're in an era right now un unfortunately where we've been kind of instilled and indoctrinated with a lot of the hustle culture style where there's a ton of it's just sad there's a ton of manipulative tactics there's a lot of forced and pressure sailing that's even being taught but i think we're seeing a big move away from that in fact some of the people teaching those are now under fire by the FTC by making bold, uh, too bold and unrealistic and frankly, uh, fake claims. So mm -hmm. I think we just, you don't, but you don't have to do that to be successful and to get a very high conversion rate. A lot of it just essentially stems from guiding people along a path that they wanted to make in the first place to leverage and, and partner with human nature and desire to, to give them a product that they already want maybe they just need right. to know specifically how how it's going to uh, help them best yeah and i think i mean i think you're correct and i think there is a pushback now and i think that uh it was starting before the pandemic i think the pandemic has definitely accelerated it where people want to they want to connect with other human beings and they want to trust they want somebody you know that they can trust and they want to un know that they're seen heard and understood and that's the recurring theme that we hear all the time is people want to be seen, heard and understood. And especially buyers, you don't want, you want to feel like you have my best interests at heart. And the only way I'm going to know that is if you have, if we have a dialogue that leads me to the conclusion that you actually understand, or at least want to understand the issues I have. Yeah, I think there's, um, there's, there's both a, when I talk about uh, conversational conversions, like we're, mm -hmm. what we're really doing is we're, we're pulling back on some of that pressure and the hype and the and and trying to put a square peg into a round hole and instead what i find and, and what actually a lot of them the more successful and i think ethical sales people and sales trainers um or even frankly you know we do a lot in terms of sales funnels uh in in both our platform but also by teaching how people can build sales funnels and scale their scale their operations and, and revenue a, a lot of that is by pulling back it's on making lower claims in fact this morning i was talking to someone who I'm in a mastermind uh, uh, group with, 
And it's shocking that the, the claims that he's making, he's got this new funnel. He just scaled it to $5,500 uh, a day in positive front end ad spend, meaning that mm -hmm. he's doubling his money on the front end product and all the back end is even additional profit. It's very rare. But what, what I found to be very shocking and surprising is that he's not making crazy claims. In fact, you'll see, we see ads all over the place, especially in the digital marketing space of, hey, we're going to guarantee you're going to make $100,000 a month. We're going to guarantee to add 50,000 a month in revenue to your business. And it's like these level of claims, it's really a race to the bottom, frankly. We're just continually stacking promise on top of promise on top of promise. And eventually it's going to be to the point where the only message in that style of marketing is going to be, hey, we'll give you a million dollars straight up with no risk to you. It's just like we're, we're going down the wrong path where we're seeing, we're, we're starting to see this big move towards in all of your marketing, either on sales calls or in front mm -hmm. of marketing or ads, making realistic claims and helping again to partner with human nature to guide people where they're looking to go anywhere. It's essentially a resistance free sale. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it is interesting what you're saying. I mean, we even see it in the CRM space that some of companies like will say, oh, yeah, our platform will boost your sales by 75%. And you're just like, right. What does that even mean? And where did you pluck that one out of? And you're right. I think people have become rightly more skeptical because they've been, let's face it, most people have been burnt. Uh, by over by being oversold and their antennas are up more so the fact is the credibility may come as you say from actually promising dialing it back a little bit to where okay people can go hmm okay that's that's a realistic expectation yeah yeah i i think you're exactly right on and you know i think it really is just generally a trap that we see all the all of our competition making bigger and bolder and louder claims and Frankly, you just, you don't need to do that. You need to essentially, what marketing is in general is you make a claim or you make a promise of what a particular product can do and then you back it up. But that second part is what a lot of offers are missing is mm -hmm. the back it up part. And if you have a high likelihood of someone going through your, your proprietary process to get a specific result, even if that result is only a small improvement, if I were to say, hey, I can increase your, your profit by 2%, 5%, and that actually happens for everyone because mm -hmm. what I'm good at actually works, then like, you're going to become famous for that. In fact, I, I think yeah. there's always two things that you're fighting with, uh, with, with really breaking out and becoming a category king. One is you have to have a killer offer. Like the offer itself has to be just so good that when people hear it, they feel like it, it makes zero sense for me to not take that offer. And the other is obscurity. It's fighting obscurity. So we want more people to know that we have a great offer. And if any of those are at odds, we're, we're going to be struggling, right? So if we have a bad offer and we're well-known, well, then we're known as a scammer. If we're mm -hmm. not well-known, but we have a great offer, we're broke. So these two things have to, to work in synergy with each other, where that offer and being well-known for delivering uh, results on that offer um, is, is, I think, is just so powerful. And it's a totally different mindset from, hey, we need to boost our we need to boost our front end claims. We need to really make things hyped up and, and, and do all that. And instead just deliver better results. And that's going to be your, your best form of marketing you'll ever see. Your ad costs will drop, your conversions will explode, your referrals will, will rise. And that all happens by essentially just delivering what it is that you promise. Yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, and I guess the, the challenge, as you said, the, the obscurity challenge, unfortunately, is ex as exacerbated today by, um, a lot of these companies uh, spend a ton of money on, you know, Google ads and retargeting. I mean, they're just bombarding everywhere and kind of drowning out others. So, I mean, there is there is a real challenge with trying to uh, trying to be heard amongst all of the hype. Yeah, yeah, I think that for me, I, I'm not going to look back when I'm 80 years old and think, boy, I wish I would have had hypier claims. I wish I would have <laughs> sold more stuff that people didn't need. No, there's for any offer. Did you know like the, the average salary for what they call underwater basket weaving, right? It's kind of a, a little bit of a metaphor for, for jobs that are just so obscure mm -hmm. and crazy, right? right. Like, it's about $80,000 a year. I mean, there, there is for the most obscure offer that's actually good, right? So mm -hmm. uh, doing something that maybe even is on the fringe of fringe, fringe of a niche of a niche of a niche, still has a massive audience of people who want to do that thing. Look at Pokemon, for example, just the craziest mm -hmm. little card game that just even resurfaced on, on the scene and exploded. There's a 
huge market. And then the more people talk about it, the market, it's uh, addressable market starts to expand. So yeah, I think I just, I want to live a, live a legacy and live a life that I can be proud to tell my kids, this is what I did, even at the cost of potentially sacrificing some revenue um, mm-hmm. to save your soul, I think is our, <laughs> probably should be one of our primary constants and our primary, uh, our, our driver is to say, I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to sell my soul just for cash. Cash is going to come and go. And when you get good at it, like it, it becomes yeah. actually pretty easy, but you, you can do it through really serving people and going above and beyond. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. And I think again, it's, uh, it's, um, it's running contrary to a lot of what's been pushed over the last, uh, you know, couple of decades, especially with all this money just being piled into companies and it all going into um, sales and marketing, marketing in particular to make all of these claims. But as you said at the beginning, and as we were discussing, I think there's a huge appetite for authenticity. I mean, to the to the point now where people are saying, oh, I can help you be more authentic. And you say, well, no, you can't. Mm. The, um, mm. Only I can be authentic. But I think people people's radar uh, is way up now. And I think the authenticity piece, so being honest, being ethical, being transparent, and I think the transparency piece is, is really critical because we're tired of all this opaque stuff that sometimes hides behind the technology. Boy, that's that's such a good point. And, and I think Alex Hormozzi, he, he, I love his stuff. He said it best that if you can anchor in some of that transparency, even into what happens to be a proposal or a pr- or a pitch, you're you're going to win f- far above any other competitor who's who's not going to identify that there is a weakness. So, for example, mm-hmm. if we're going to talk tactically, he might say, "Look, this is going to be the hardest work that you'll ever do in your business." but it's going to double your gross revenue. It's going to double your, your net profits. And it's going to give you an extra 10 hours a week for free time mm-hmm. for family. It's like, we're being transparent that th- there is a trade-off for everything. We know that instinctively. We know that as humans, that there's a sacrifice and a trade-off for everything. If I want to spend more time with my kids, it means I'm not spending time growing a, a business, for example, and mm-hmm. vice versa. Um, and so we, we have to maintain some level of balance so that we can maintain our sanity. But I think if we can be very up, up front, you know, for example, with a great, great example would be drop funnels. We are not the world's easiest platform to, to build on. It's not like a, in two seconds, you've got, you know, everything completely set up and going and, and a, you know, there, we, we're up front in saying that it's a very powerful tool. And if you're, if you're willing to embrace the slight learning curve, sometimes it can happen in 20 or 30 minutes of just getting in to kind of get used to things and, and learn where things are, follow the tutorials, the articles and, and do what what most successful uh, users do. Mm-hmm. You're going to see new organic traffic coming in from Google by ranking. Your funnels are going to load a lot faster for maximum conversions, and we're going to go above and beyond for you for every step of the journey with our our support. So these critical elements, if we're if we're upfront about it, that hey, not everything is sunshine and roses. Where as you mentioned, it ra- raises people's radar. If your offer can also instill like, look, this is not the cheapest or it's not mm-hmm. the fastest or or whatever there's some weakness to the offer um being up front with that instead of it being a surprise later can actually increase your conversions uh, that's my yeah. opinion no no I, I i totally agree with you and i think it's a and i think it's a really interesting it's an interesting point as well the fact the transparency piece because I mean, even telling people in this, in the culture we live in today, where everything is a shortcut and everything is easy and everything is, is being upfront. And we, we all know, as you said, instinctively that that's not true, but some of us decide to get carried away with it anyway. Uh, you know, instinctively. So when somebody says, yes, here's the work you will have to do, that's, that's when you're crossing over into, into being a partner and you're being honest and you're saying, yeah, we'll be there to help you. But yeah, there's going to be work on, on your behalf because let's face it, we don't know your business. We can't come in and do it all for you. I mean, you have to do it yourself on, on, in order to be self-sufficient in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what do you see, um, nowadays, you know, when you're, when you're having these kind of, of conversion conversations, um, what are some of the things that you find surprising from, from the other side, from a a prospect, when you start to be transparent, when you start to, you know, really dig into things, I mean, what kind of reaction do you get? You know, I'll tell you when someone is, and I can explain a couple tactics here Mm -hmm. that, most ethical salespeople are going to know like the back of their hand, but there's some people who have maybe never been exposed to it. 
Um, but there's like this sigh of relief. There's this, you can disarm people and, and establish yourself as someone who's really trying to help them. And then there's like, there's no sales pressure. In fact, mm -hmm. it's what we call leaning, right? If I lean out, you're going to lean in. In fact, if I start to just, just really <laughs> calm, you're actually going to kind of perk in. You're going to look, you're going to mm -hmm. be interested in what's happening. That's leaning out versus me shouting, Hey, I've got this snake oil. Like come by. The yeah. So it's like the, just the energetic difference there can make, um, can, can really change things up and can tell people, Hey, I'm not here to force you into something that you don't want to do. I'm here to just ask you the right questions. So I'd say leaning out is one. Number two is just asking more questions. If 80% of your time speaking to a prospect is spent asking, just asking questions, whether it's just about their life and no teaching, no how to, no diving into the weeds, 80% of your time literally spent asking them what's going on and then digging multiple layers deep. You can say, Hey, where's revenue at for you right now? For example, mm -hmm. and they say, all right, it's X, Y, Z. Well, uh, is that where you want it to be right now? And they'll be like, ah, I wish we, it really was, was higher. All right, cool. So help, help me understand that. Like, where did you think it would be by now? And what do you think was missing? Right? So we're mm -hmm. establishing current scenario. We're establishing future scenario and that gap just in a matter of three individual questions. Um, but it all comes through questions instead of, oh yeah, your, your revenue is not where it should be. I've got, I know another company who's doing way better. Right. Like, and, and I see people using these tactics where it's like uh, this, just this bully alpha male mask, whatever. It's not even masculine energy as far as I'm concerned. It's just, just, just dirty energy, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, no, it, it's, yep. it's, in, it's interesting, you know, that, um, I had an experience actually recently where we started using a tool, um, from one company and then their, their rival suddenly started reaching out to multiple people in the organization with these emails that had 10 bullets about how crap the software was that you had just installed, how bad it was. So all of this stuff. And eventually, I eventually when all of this circled back to me, I wrote back to them and I said, this is the worst way to sell the absolute worst way to sell. It's desperate. It's tacky. Why would you just come bulldozing in? And why would you spam everybody in my organization trying to scare them and, and make them feel like they've made a, a bad decision? I said, it's just an awful way to try and sell. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there's, there's natural comparisons and competition yeah. in the marketplace, but it doesn't mean that we have to lean into like defaming or, or weakening mm -hmm. other people's products to make ourselves look better because it often will do the opposite, right? So I think, I just think overarchingly, there is a desire in the market and a move towards higher ethics, transparency, and integrity mm -hmm. where, you know, even, you know, we, we know so, so many names of, of influencers who have gotten really big. And then there's just this huge plummet and fall because yep. they were using some tactics that just, well, A, aren't legal or, yep. or B, were just not really serving people well. So I have, I always ask, the, I ask the question, how can you frame your offer and your business? Be so proud and confident in what you do that you could, that you, you'd have no problem if your mom bought it or your grandma bought it right. or whatever, yeah, yeah. someone close to you that you would have no problem saying, this is what I'm doing. It's out in the open. Yeah. And just the other thing I just wanted to comment on what you were just saying about questioning, because it's so important because there's a trap that people often fall into is like, if I ask you a question and you, you give me an answer. Um, like you say, I say, well, how are, has revenue? And you go, yeah, well, it's it's okay. Is where you want it to be? Uh, well, you know, we'd like to be a bit higher. And I go, cool, I've got it. You're all about revenue and I'm diving in here. Mm -hmm. If I ask more questions, I may find that that's not your most pressing issue right now. Yes, maybe you'd like to grow more, but there's other issues, hot button issues that if I continue to ask you questions that I could uncover. But if I jump in on the first thing that I think is an issue, I may expend a lot of energy to discover it actually isn't something that you have any impetus to do anything about. Right. Then you're selling something that they don't actually care about. Right. Yeah, so exactly. And, and we only find that out through ask, through asking, through questioning, through being, um, I, I think it was Jeremy Miner, who's a, who's a sales trainer in the space. And he says, he call it like the curious grandpa. It's like that. You know, what, what, what is really, he, he phrases it a different way, but yeah. it's like, you know, what is this thing? You know, like, just tell me about that. Like, and people says, oh, if so, if someone jumps on a call and they're, they're very defensive, hey, I'm not sure that I, I actually even want to buy anything. You can say, oh, cool. Well, I, I don't even know if we can help you yet. Like, I have no idea if this is even a solution for you. I'd have to really ask some more questions. So, like, tell, tell me where are you at with this right now? And and with that, we just become that inquisitive, kind of curious grandpa, really like investing 
curiosity into this person because frankly, we only find out what's really going to to solve their problem and serve them at the highest level by, by, by behaving in that way. Yeah. And the only other thing I would say is like, don't ask questions if you're not going to listen to the answers. That's the other part mm -hmm. is like asking questions is great, but if you don't listen and really understand the answers and, you know, ask questions as a follow up for validation or to dig deeper, then you know, you're just, you're just asking questions for the sake of it. So make sure you've got the listening bit down too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the beauty, the beautiful part of that, John, is when when you decide to maybe you're doing organic marketing, maybe you're not doing paid ads or you're not using sales funnels or any of that yet, by by having done 10, 30, 50 calls with someone and you've asked these questions, you're going to find these recurring themes again yeah. and again. And then you can preemptively know that that's coming. You know that those are problems in the market and you can you can automate that through building it out in a funnel and address those exact problems. Right. If people are saying, hey, I don't really, as you mentioned, maybe I don't really want revenue to grow. Maybe I just want more free time. Maybe I'm working mm -hmm. 18 hour days and it's like, sure, I could grow revenue, but at the expense of just putting in more time, that's not a value driver for me. I really just want to spend more time with family or whatever that is. It's like, okay, so how do we adjust this in a way that the revenue stays consistent, but yep. we also get some of your time back, right? Yeah. Those concerns you can always address in your, in your ongoing marketing. And so it's, it's really a powerful feedback loop. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Jordo, thanks very much. All of Jordo's information will be below this uh, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Drop Funnels. Yeah, so Drop Funnels is, uh, it's essentially, it was solving my own problem. I built, hmm. I built it all on a WordPress-based infrastructure. So you can build your website, your blog, uh, sales funnels, digital courses, and it's really good for experts, uh, authors, coaches, consultants, the types that really don't want to have an on staff tech team or designers it's very easy to uh to build in again there's always a learning curve with every anything but if you're willing to go through that you're going to see more organic traffic uh the funnels load very quickly um and it we love seeing some of that bonus lead flow coming through google by just being built on a strong infrastructure so i always say that growth growth happens not through addition it comes by subtraction and eliminating friction points right so for, for us, we're all about helping people eliminate dozens of other tools that they're using and duct taping mm -hmm. together and just put it into one place to help them win. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Helping people with their shiny new toy syndrome um, and yeah. duct taping all these. Which new... we all suffer with, right? Yeah, which we all suffer with. But anyway, well, listen, thanks again, uh, Giordo. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.